Thank you, Facebook people, fans, fuzzy fans, for joining us. James, again, we're so honored that you picked us as your first yarn shop to visit. And I'm honored to be here. Well, I remember you saying it was also one of the first ones that you went to after COVID mm -hmm. also. Yeah. So, yeah, so mm -hmm. we're just... This is it. This is my local yarn oh, shop, okay. and I feel lucky that I have a shop yeah. like this. <laughs> well, near thank me. you. Well, we've known James for a few years, um, but this is the first time that he's come and he's going to share his designs with you. This amazing library here. Um, he's a knitwear designer who lives in Tallahassee for just another couple weeks, and then he's going to Croatia. Um, and he's been—he uh, is a professional violinist. We also asked him what pronouns he wanted to use in this space, and while he's here, he, anything like that. Uh, and, and, but you also said he and him. It's so, fine. Yeah. It's absolutely. Yeah. So just so that's why I'm using that I, one. I was talking to a friend the other day about like, oh, every time I do a collaboration, they ask like, what's your preference, and I yeah. really, I don't care. And she said something that really made me laugh. She said that I should start telling people to use it as their personal Rorschach of what, of what they want to call me, but no. I don't, I don't want to stress anyone out. So you know what people want to be aware and yeah. write. It, is, yeah. it was helpful to have you tell us. Yeah. <laughs> so James has always had an interest in fiber arts. He learned how to crochet in middle school. and then From my mommy. And then I taught her to knit. I forced her to learn how to knit. <laughs> in high school, right? Is when, when you started? I, was, I taught myself to knit in high school, and then I forced her to learn as an adult. And she's like the most dramatic knitter ever. <laughs> I can't wait to imagine what dramatic yeah, knitting is. Like I forced her to knit a hat, and when she got to the decreases in DPNs, every oh, time no. she moved, a DPN would fall out, and instead of oh, being like, oh darn, help me, she would scream. <laughs> <laughs> in Tallahassee yeah, for a master's in violin performance right. uh, is when you designed your first pattern, yeah. the best beret. The best beret. Oh, beautiful. Beautifully put on this little thing, so yes. I'm not going to take it off, but yeah. this came out December 2019, and the mech hit shortly after. I lost my orchestra playing work for about a, a year at least, and uh, I was like, okay, best beret did pretty well. Like, I'm going to lean into knitwear design and see where it takes me, and it's been a really well, I'm going to let you take it from there. So welcome, James. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Um, again, thank you for coming. And thanks, Fuzzy Go, for having me. This is super cool. This is my first like, in-person event meeting people. And it's really exciting. Um, so we all have these little cards. Yeah. Since uh, Cadence went to the trouble of making these, they're beautiful. I'm just going to use this order. I think it's pretty easy. And help me. I could wax poetic. They're my designs are my baby. So if I need to speed it up. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what we're halfway through. Okay. Um, so the first one is Ridley's Raglan, and this just came out pretty recently in June. Um, and I just want to say about this sample, I would actually consider this the modified version of this pattern. The pattern is primarily um, designed with short sleeves in mind. And generally, even when I design a short, a long sleeve pattern, most knitters will mod it to be short sleeve anyway because they want to be done. And I don't blame them. <laughs> these, sleeves, these sleeves took a long time. They're so much longer than this little cropped body. Um, um, but yeah, I did it that way. Just I had my friend Alexandra model, and they wanted the long sleeve, and I was like, that's perfect because I'll knit it short sleeve. Take your pictures, take it back, knit it long sleeve. We'll take more pictures, and oh. this is its final stage. Um, but. Yeah, I just wanted something, this is more like feminine and delicate than a lot of my designs, and um, that's one of the reasons I was like, I actually want to use a model. That was my first time using a model for something, because I was like, would I wear this? I don't know. I love it as a design, but then of course, once it came out and a lot of people made it, I was like, I want one. <laughs> so that's on my list of things to do, is I wanted a black one uh, in short sleeves out of this, and we, they... Either we have or we're getting here this uh, new sadness, sad, did I say it? Sadness garn? Yes, we have uh, that. In yes. cotton, right? Uh, yes. Um, and that would be perfect for this. This is originally knit in a cotton hemp mix. Um, but yeah, really lovely, fun to layer or wear on its own. Um, and then, yeah. and then beautiful. <laughs> this is the, yeah, this would be lovely. For Ripley's yeah, Raglan. Mandarin um, Petite. Love that. And um, next on the list is, what is this one called? Pure Mesh Pullover. <laughs> and I love this pattern. I, it's out there for a lot of knitters, but 
some people saw it and were like, I've been waiting for this for my whole life, and other people were like, I could never wear that. But then they knit it, and they're like, oh, wait, I love it. Um, I think it's pretty versatile. As for how you style it, um, obviously, you can bear all <laughs> just for this. Um, but I think it can go over a bra, under a t-shirt, uh, under an uh, open button down. Like, There's so many ways. I have a little fun reel on my Instagram showing all the ways I like to style this. and it's. Um, it's just fun to design things that have some shock value and some novelty on Ravelry. And I'm like not a partier or a clubber, but I think it's fun to design something that I'm like, this, you could wear this to the club. Um, my original sample is designed in Lobby Anime Kumo, I think it's called, which is a lace weight, 100% wool. Um, I actually think, um, is that the yarn that we yes, have for this? Yes, this is the Fino. So this is the Fino, 70 wool, 30 silk. And I think this is actually really great. Is this like more of a fingering weight? Mm -hmm. I was gonna mm -hmm. say, this is designed in lace weight, but a lot of people have done it in sock yarn out of their stash, speckles, whatever. Anything on that fingering wall would work. Um, and it, I think it looks great. So again, with a lot of my patterns, Kind of choose your own adventure on what weight yarn you're going to use, but I do think this is a good choice because it has the silk content. Because this is delicate. If you're a clumsy person like me, like you've got to be careful wearing this, especially if you do go 100% wool. This is some random cone yarn that has some rayon content, so it's a little bit stronger than 100% wool. But the silk in this, especially, most silk yarns that I've worked with when I'm too lazy to get scissors and I try to break it by hand, I can't. So that's great for this because it's. I'm not gonna lie, it's easy to snag. So far, so good for me, but um, I'm sure at some point I'm gonna walk through a door frame and a jagged splinter is gonna attack me. <laughs> I don't want that to spell the end of my beautiful knitwear. But the good thing about this is you can knit it in like three seconds and it takes like no yarn at all. So, and that's kind of a recurring theme in a lot of my patterns is I like to see what I can do playing with gauge and proportion to try to make things low yardage and quick to knit, because who doesn't like those attributes in a pattern, right? Um, okay, next we're gonna go to Sungazer. If you have another yarn to hand me. I do. Or three, actually. Lovely. <laughs> we should have a color changing yarn. Oh. Um, Peter Farms? Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. That's right, I was ahead. Well, I'm gonna say about ahead. My bad. I, I have two <laughs> modular patterns, this one and Mystic Square, and another one that I'm working on. And all of them are done in Noro. I'm a big Noro fan. Again, I'm not gonna lie to you and be like, oh, it's so soft. There's like twigs in it, and it's kind of <laughs> scratchy. But I, the colors are just so pretty, and I actually really love the textures you get from it. And I will also say, if you get the chance to try different Noros, some are actually really not bad at all and don't have any twigs. <laughs> Others, you're like, wow, straight from the farm, how special. <laughs> um, but this is knit in um, Noro Silk Garden Sock, but more at a worsted gauge, honestly. I do feel like, especially with Noro, it's so sticky that I like to take their thinner yarns and knit them at a bigger gauge. Just more comfortable in the hands, and it, it blooms up and fills up nicely. Um, but I really love working on my modular patterns. Um, I feel like that's kind of a niche I'm starting for myself in the knitting world. Um, and the way this one works is you, you do a circular cast on, fiddly and annoying, but whatever, you can do it, I believe in you. <laughs> and you knit this square, and then the pieces are knit um, counterclockwise, right, going this way, uh, all the way around with the neck shaping. And very simple, I leave the neck edge just totally as is, raw. Then you um, actually keep live stitches on every side and either three needle bind off the edges or you pick them back up and knit for the sleeve and for the hem. And my whole thing on this pattern was I'm gonna actually achieve a modular pattern that does not have a single mattress stitch. Like you are gonna either three needle bind off or there's already stitches where, where you are and there's a lot of picking up. But the way these patterns work is like once you knit something to attach to, you're like, picking up stitches to start a new piece and then it's like at the end of every row you'll get to one of your picked up stitches and you do a purl two together on the wrong side and it slowly binds you know this piece to this piece along these seams so all these seams going out on these rays 
or just start with picked up stitches. And the wrong sides of these are really pretty too, actually. You can kind of see a little bit the way these seams look, right? Um, very annoying to design and to grade. <laughs> That's why I, I got started on this and I was like, mm, we're going to make this be in four sizes instead of nine because it's, literally, it's just a box. It's a very simple to wear. And I, I put in the pattern like anywhere from negative ease to, to a large amount of positive ease, like it's fine on this. Um, and we have the Federbrook Farms yarn. This is really soft. <laughs> I'm trying to say, oh, it's not that bad. And then I feel this. And I'm like, okay, which would I rather feel on my body? <laughs> Probably this. Um, but I will say for all my modular patterns, um, if you look on the hashtags and on the Ravelry pages, plenty of people knit them in solid colors and just choose a new color for every segment. I would say if you want to do that, I think Mystic Square looks slightly nicer when you actually pick a, a color changing yarn because the pieces are so big. But this, because there's so many pieces and they're small, it's quite pretty when people have mm -hmm. done solid color yarns and change. Um, if I ever re-knit it, that's something I would consider doing. Um, was up so pretty. I want to put it back. Nice. You felt like you were with us all week with the hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wish this could be a permanent nice exhibition. <laughs> um, next is look at my holes. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's those options. Um, I think this yarn is a sport weight, but I'm going to say you can use fingering sport or DK, maybe even worsted, honestly. I think, was this the one, the one we talked about? Even shiny, happy cotton might work? Yeah. Okay, and mm -hmm. yeah, because it's also knit at such a large gauge, um, I think you can get gauge with a variety of combinations of yarns and needle sizes. Um, but we have some dando, which are beautiful like plant fibers that are gonna keep you cool. And this is a blend, a wool cotton blend from Mad Tosh. Um, but this was my first raglan um, design. And I did this in collaboration with my dear friend, Jesse May, who's also a, a very cool hip designer. And she did a, a little tank that goes under. Um, called As Friends, so together it's cheeky. But look at my holes, As Friends set. Um, oh, is this an As we Friends? We have As Friends, this knit is, by Alicia. This is like a longer As Friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I actually, I've knit the As Friends twice, and what I did the second time is I ignored the pattern, and I knit like two sizes too small, and a little bit longer, because I knew I was gonna stretch it out width-wise, and it was gonna shrink vertically. And it's more of like a super form fitting, almost more like her bralettes without any cool. shaping, just knit it tight yeah. and it shapes to you. Um, so this is also a really versatile pattern to put together with this. Or really what I love is wearing my really tight as friends underneath my pure mesh pullover. I think that's a really cool look when I don't want to be totally nipples out in public. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I love this pattern. This is my most grungiest looking sample here because I have worn the crap out of this. I've gotten sunscreen all over the neck and it's yellow because I wear this to the beaches into the springs and it's, it's fun whether I'm just wearing this or layering it. Um, I really enjoy this piece. And then next on the list is dust check. Getting to the hat territory. Oh wow, and the exact colors <laughs> I used. Um, I originally used Harris Bell, whatever their um, fingering weight is, and because it's color work, I wanted something toothy and woolen spun, and this looks pretty toothy and woolen spun to me. It's a single ply, um, but I think this would be beautiful in a, a color work application. But this is just a simple hat. I did make it really dramatically long, and I like to wear it coming, <laughs> like floating off the top of my head in a dramatic way. Um, this one starts right with the color work and goes up to the top. I really love the decreases on this are just so cool. Like it just disappears into the middle like the top of a circus tent, uh, which I really enjoyed. Pat myself on the back for some, <laughs> some good design there. Um, I used a special decrease too. I think it's a centered single decrease, which I had not done before, but I, I didn't want any 
spiraling. I wanted to go straight up to the top, and I think we got that here. That's not hard either, the, the, the decrease, you can do it. And then at the end, you pick up stitches and do this I chord. And I chords are also just a recurring theme in my designs, and I hate to knit them. <laughs> I don't enjoy knitting I chords at all. I mean, I kind of do, I love all knitting, but it's not my favorite technique to do, but I love it as a design element. I think it looks great. Putting it on a hat, I think, was non-conventional. Like, we usually have ribbing, but that was kind of the point. I wanted something kind of funky and modern. Um, and that's why I went with that. But yeah, there's different ways to do I chords. This one is picked up, it's an applied I chord. You pick up stitches and then do an I chord bind off all the way around. Um, but yeah, and did I say what these actually are? What is this? <laughs> we'll stock we'll light. Stock light. light. Mm -hmm. uh, this would be beautiful. Lots of colors. Yeah. Yeah, we do have plenty of colors. I just realized what I was picking it for, and I was like, oh, let me go get the black. <laughs> and this, this hat goes, I think I did all the way from like newborn or little itty bitty to uh, <laughs> adult big head. <laughs> um, next is color quadrant crop. Oh, this is my head or my hair, but I need a big head. Talk about I chords. <laughs> We've got an I chord all the way around the hem. We've got an I chord on this sleeve, an I chord on this sleeve, an I chord around the neckline, and an R I chord at the top of the pocket. But it's worth it, okay? Um, it just gives such a clean finish. This is so fun. I actually brought today. I didn't bring this the other day, but I brought it today. Um, this has this is my only design with this feature of like the the inset sleeve. So you do do a little bit of short rows on this and. As a design, I would say this is pretty derivative. I feel like t-shirts with this cult, this design and pattern have been around probably since the 80s. It was just fun to translate that into hand knitting. I was also really excited about this, figuring out how do I do a, like an easy applied pocket. And um, I want to say there's a video tutorial for that, but if not, don't get mad at me. But I feel like there is. So a lot of my patterns, if I'm doing something kind of tricky, I'll, I'll do a little quick video for it. Um, but just insert your needle into the stitches in the light pink that are already here um, and you knit a flap and then do an I-cord bind off and then you have this dangling flap and then you just this is if you haven't done it before it might seem weird but you can do mattress stitch in the middle of a piece of fabric we normally are doing it on the edges of two pieces of fabric but it's the same technique you're just working between a column of stitches in the middle and on the edge of the pocket if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, but that's fun, and you can put turkey in it for your cat. <laughs> if you saw the reel <laughs> with the instructions. And then uh, since, I, since I was doing the shape with the inset sleeve and the short rows, I already had this kind of pretty curve and not a drop sleeve or anything. So I was like, you know what? Why not include in a pattern to just stop there if you want, because it already has a pretty shape for a sleeveless tee shape or even a tank. Um, I've seen people kind of hack this and really wear it more as like a sweater or vest too, mm -hmm. which is cool. Some people even figured out how to do their own v-neck. Don't ask me how to do that. I'm not gonna be sitting down and figuring that out. But you could probably figure it out. <laughs> uh, or find the person who did it and message them. <laughs> um, but it's all the same. It just doesn't have the sleeves. And this is just fun. Um, I knit this in Encore just because there's like 80 colors and it's, it's inexpensive. I think this probably costs less than $30 to make in a 2XL. Um, and I, I love that you have the four colors and then you get to change them up on each, every I chord edge changes color on both of these. Um, but these are fun. And then we, what yarns do, am I holding here? We've got Spud and Chloe's sweater uh -huh. and then we also have the Sad Nez Garn Smart. Yeah, these are all lovely and uh, this is a worsted weight. You can do it in DK, probably do it in Erin. Um, and if I were actually, this is like a wool acrylic blend, but if I redid this, I would probably want to do it in a plant fiber because they are summery, especially the sleeveless one. It would get a little more wear out of it, to be honest. If it were cotton or silk or a blend, rayon, something like that would be quite nice. Okay, and then we go to Earth and Air. So earth and air, does this, this doesn't come up, but I'm going to pull it off. <laughs> and, then and then I'll give it back to you to put back on. Oh, it needs to come off the top. Wrap a 
Okay. It's free. <laughs> Earth and Air is actually my first garment design, and I don't know what I was thinking, being like, mm, I'm going to start with a brioche sweater. Um, but it is pretty simple, actually. Um, I knit this in Harrisville's Worsted Way and some random Etsy yarn dye, I don't remember. I think it was Dye for Yarns and this bright electric neon yellow for the mohair. But this design was primarily inspired by texture more than anything else. And having the mix with like kind of a heavy worsted weight yarn and then this itty bitty mohair knit in two color brioche just gives you this beautiful, really lightweight drapey fabric. And also this pattern is well known for being low yardage, which as I said, we love a low yardage pattern, right? Um, I did this with three quarter length sleeves. A lot of people go low sleeve or short sleeve with this. Um, yeah, the other thing is a lot of people, this, this worsted weight is woolen spun. I think a lot of people use um, worsted spun, like a smooth, not fuzzy yarn. And that just gets you a little bit of a heavier sweater. So it might not maintain its really like boxy shape because this has a lot of positive ease might drape vertically more but it's still beautiful and you can see a lot of examples of those type of yarn choices on Instagram and Ravelry and then again I just can't stay away from an I-cord collar it's so pretty and really rustic with this yarn especially this top white so pretty And then what yarns was I just handed? Where did they go? Um, you have so the, this would be a good match for what I was saying with the woolen spun. Mm -hmm. This is wool stock. wool stock worsted, and it's got a little bit of that. It's much softer than the Harrisville, I'll say, but it does have a little bit of the halo and the crunch, which is nice. And this beautiful endless yarn, marvelous mohair. Um, oh. But people do all sorts of stuff oh. with all my patterns. People use speckles. I like, I, I gravitate a lot towards solid colors in a lot of my designs, but knitters don't. And I think it's, <laughs> I think it's beautiful that they just use what makes them happy. Um, give this back to you. Okay. And then we are on to Mystic Square. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> Mystic Square is my original modular pattern. It's a lot simpler than Sungazer as a design um, and the amount of work I had to do. So this one has all nine sizes. Um, you start with this central rectangle and the pattern has every step of this illustrated. Like it has a picture of this box and then a little star of like you start picking up here and then go down and cast some stitches this way. Um, but again, it uses the same te technique as Sungazer, where you knit something, a block, a building block to start with, and then you pick up stitches um, going down from here, and then you cast on stitches going this way. And as you knit these rows going up along this side, every time you get to the end of a purl side row, so you'll have all of these stitches already picked up, and you have a little marker at the, at the start of the cast it on stitches, Every time you get past that marker, you purl two together the first two stitches, and that's slowly attaching, applying this rectangle to the edge of this rectangle. Um, I get a lot of feedback on this pattern that it is very like hard to put down. People really enjoy knitting this, and I feel the same way, especially this one. This is the sun gazer is the same technique, but it's definitely less potato chippy just because there's increases happening. This is just a bunch of rectangles. You have a little bit of work to do when you do the neck shaping. It's simple, though. Um, and you pick up stitches for a sleeve and pick up stitches for a ribbed hem. Um, this is in Cleopatra, which is 100% wool from Noro. I want to say they recently discontinued it, but I bet it's still on yarn.com, and we have a beautiful yarn here to use. Um, this really fun. This is like kind of a slow color changing yarn like the Noro. Um, and again, with the Sun Gazer and with this, people do solid colors out of their stash. I think this is also a fun one because this is a DK worsted weight yarn and gauge. You can take your fingering weight and help hold it double and change, you know, kind of fade. Make your own color changing yarn that way is really fun out of scraps. 
Um, that's something I like about the modular patterns, especially. I feel like there's a lot of freedom with them. Um, you don't have to use Noro, obviously. Um, but these are Harmony Worsted by Hearth. I always want to say Yearth. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, love this pattern. Love these colors. I actually bought this this yarn, not thinking I was going to make a design out of it. I, I was going to knit Jessie May's cozy classic raglan into a short sleeve, which I've done in Nora before. But I was designing at this point, and I got the yarn. And I was like, well, I'm going to knit something. I might as well make some money off it and make a, <laughs> make a new original design. And I was quite glad I did, because um, I love this. And um, part of the inspiration behind me getting into these modular building block designs was that I already loved Noro since the first time I ever knit and crochet, even as a kid. I, I was drawn to it in the yarn shop immediately. Um, but once I actually got more into knitting and was making garments with it, I noticed, for example, like on a lot of bottom-up sweaters, right, you knit in the round all the way to the armpit, and then you knit the rest of the front flat, and then you go back and knit the rest of the back flat. And so when you're using a self-striping yarn, what that does is you have maybe 300 stitches in the body and you're having really narrow stripes, and then suddenly at the armpit you have 150 stitch rows, and the stripes get doubly wide, right? Which, like, I have plenty of things I've knit out of Noro that have that look, and they're beautiful still. But to me, I was like, hmm, this is kind of like a design challenge. How can I design something that makes the most of this beautiful, color-changing, not inexpensive yarn? Like, it's a luxury yarn. I want to really use it to its full potential. So that's what got me started in the modular thing. Um, it's just seeing how I could best use uh, Noro. And if, if the people at Noro are watching me, they're, they're such a mysterious brand. They only got on Instagram like a couple years ago and they follow like 25 people and I'm one of them. Oh. So, and I, I'm always like, hey Noro, send me an email and offer me a million dollars and I'll design yeah. you a full collection. And I'm good at it, okay? Um, and I like to keep my shaping simple on these modular designs, because there's a lot going on within. So the shape overall, I like to just keep as a rectangle. And that's really fun for me, because I sit down with a piece of paper and draw a rectangle and just start like, how do I want my puzzle pieces to be for this modular cool. pattern? And at the end, I'll show you what I'm working on, which is a new one. And thanks to you, we have some Noro coming. I'm, I, I was <laughs> bullying Kate. I was like, I gotta get Noro if you're gonna have me here, because people are gonna want it after seeing all these beautiful sweaters. Um, but this would be lovely, and like I said, like. Do anything. Do solid colors. Do your own color changes. Use other color changing yarn. What's next on my list? Uh, the best beanie. Best beanie. Best beanie is such a simple pattern. I almost was like, should I charge you money for this? But <laughs> it's simple. It's well written. It's easy to follow. The pattern's really cute too. And my main goal with this, other than having a basic vanilla beanie pattern was I wanted to encourage people to try new styling. So both in the way I knit this and the way I styled it and the instructions in the pattern, I recommend that you knit this itty bitty short tiny hipster beanie and try actually wearing this hat. It's really, it's not utilitarian, y'all. It's for style. There's nothing wrong with that. It's cute, especially living down here. Even when it does kind of get cold in the winter, it's not wool over your ears cold here almost ever. But this is like, oh, I feel wintry and cute, and it's not <laughs> overheating me. So really, that was the point. So I wanted to encourage knitters to like, because I had, you know, these little short hipster boy beanies, skater beanies, have been popular for years in the mainstream commercial fashion world. And I hadn't really seen a lot of people hand knitting or designing mm -hmm. patterns encouraging knitters to try that style. Mm -hmm. So this was really a campaign to get people out, of, just to try something different with their hat knitting. Also, it's less knitting. It's less yeah. yarn. I knit this and the one that we'll talk about later, this color quadrant, which is just the intarsia version of this. Both of them with fingering weight yarn held double. I love yarns held double. I feel like they always give me a softness and a drape that's a little bit different. And especially when I do something that's fingering weight held double, I feel like that's like, for a lot of knitters, we have a lot of fingering weight and soft yarn in our stashes. So if you have that soft yarn that you've always loved, but you just haven't felt like turning into socks, you hold it double and make a hat. And, you know, in a couple of days. Um, so this is fun. I actually reversed it on you. We're supposed to talk about the color quadrant. Oh, that's okay. Chat, so they're, but they use um, same yarn, so. And what am I holding here? <laughs> Those are some lady dye Ooh, fingerings. These are beautiful. I love this tonal emerald to dark green. 
What's that? They're named after Bridgerton. Oh, fun. <laughs> Bridgerton collection. I only watched season one. I don't know if I'm going to go to season two. <laughs> the There's so much TV to choose from now. <laughs> and I've really got hooked on the I worst, know, like, most trashy TV you could watch. Real Housewives. <laughs> and I'm not stopping anytime but soon. You're, just, you're busy for a while. So why you? don't we just <laughs> yeah. talk about this right next. Um, this is, like I said, this is just the Intarja version of Best Me. Uh, exact same like decreases two by two ribbing as well but it's knit flat because like intarsia in the round is a thing I've never done it I don't really ever want to do it it seems <laughs> finicky and I don't mind I don't mind flat knitting and I don't I know it seems like oh a hat with a seam really you're gonna make me mattress stitch a hat yes and it's worth it this is like <laughs> I, this is a pattern that gets me worked up because I feel like it's under knit and underappreciated because it's actually like I grab this all the time in the fall and winter I wear it like, I just think it's really cool. It's really like street style. Um, it's fun with the four colors. Um, it's different. And there's in-depth uh, instruction for intarsia in that pattern um, with the video tutorial as well. It's not a bad first beginner intarsia pattern, but I'll actually say, even though it's quite a lot bigger, my color quadrant crop that we already talked about on the end there, that actually is a super beginner-friendly intarsia pattern because despite the fact that it uses four colors, you only ever change colors in the, in the middle, right? Like this is just like a big stripe. You just change after a certain number of rows for these. So you're only doing intarsia in the same place. It never moves. I like that about this. Whereas this, the place where you're doing the intarsia stays the same all the way around the hat, but you do start to have the decreases happening right around the area. So like, I don't know, a little bit more challenging, I guess, but not really. And like I said, there's good videos and stuff. So yeah, knit, knit color quadrant cap. I love it. And make it tiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, best beret, aww. I'm sentimental about best beret because it's my first pattern and it came out of a place of like I'd kind of been thinking about design I put out my free shawl pattern that I never talk about at that point and uh, it really was from looking at Ravelry for beret patterns because I wanted to knit one and I didn't see anything I particularly liked like I had a, a felt beret that I bought in Montreal that I liked it was also bright red and I wanted a hand knitting equivalent of that kind of stiffness and moldability that you get with felt. So with that in mind, I was like, okay, I'm gonna use a woolen yarn, and a lot of people don't, and their berets are a little bit floppy. <laughs> but again, like, a flop, floppy berets are a thing too, and they're, they're cool, it's just not what I, I was necessarily going for in this design. So if you wanna get the look, you wanna use something toothy and wooly, and it's a worsted weight yarn that I knit at a really tight gauge. I actually hate that. I, I don't like to knit something tight that's hard on the hands, but, it's only a hat. <laughs> Break it up. Don't knit it all in one sitting, right? Um, but when you do that, you get this felt-like fabric where even my my increases and decreases kind of disappear into the texture. Mm -hmm. And when people use a super wash yarn, I think it looks fine, but you see, you could count the increases and decreases mm -hmm. on that when they do it. It's such beautiful stitch definition. I want zero stitch definition in this. I think even when I block this, I didn't want to shrink or anything, but when I laid it out, I just, a little <laughs> bit all over, got it to fuzz up, and I wouldn't say I felted it at all, but it's a similar motion that if you were gonna felt it, just not nearly as much, right? Um, yeah, it's my first pattern, came out in December of 2019, didn't know what would come of it, if anything, and it did really well, it blew up. It was, I was still in school at that point, and it was really exciting to be in my practice room being like, I'm making money <laughs> off of this. <laughs> what? I made that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, my niece was on her way to Paris. And I cute. Made that for her. Oh, so and COVID good. hit, and the trip got canceled. Oh. But she still has the beret. <laughs> well, yeah. Next time. And uh, it has and this she little. You. <laughs> she does. <laughs> cute little eye cord stem at the top, and I also just for fun put in a pattern version where you can do two going out, and it looks kind of like a little sprout. Oh. There's the single stock and the twin stocks version. <laughs> the yarn we have pulled for that is wool stock worsted or again the unique worsted. Um yes, there's a number of good the 
Is that the same yarn we talked about for Earth and Air? That beautiful to mm -hmm. toothy worsted? Yes. Yeah, yes. that would be great. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad. Thank you for putting all the yarn suggestions oh. on this pamphlet. <laughs> it makes everything really easy for all of us. Uh, the next is my in progress, well, not in progress, but not out yet, uh, garter glide tee. This is in testing. Um, and it comes out next month. My first time designing a v neck. Uh, it's worked in this lace weight linen held double, and it, you can see it has a really pretty drape. But I think you can absolutely, that's not the most standard linen weight that I see on the market. So I think a lot of people are going to have an easier time acquiring. Uh, like a sport fingering or DK linen that they can hold single and probably get the same gauge or any other. I mean, I think some of my testers are doing it in wool and it's looking pretty to me. Um, and it does have, it's got a lot of positive ease, got 10 inches of positive ease for every size um, or eight to, eight to 12 with the range. And uh, so it does sit with drop shoulder quite like a t-shirt. So it could be a transitional piece in a wool. Um, but yeah, it's knit side to side, which is something I've been getting more into doing with my designs, um, which is fun. Garter the entire way, hence the name Garter Glide T. Um, just a fun way to do some color blocking, right? Um, without having to do, you know, usually when we have vertical changes of color, if we were working at traditional sweater, it's intarsia. And I do have, like I've talked about some intarsia patterns. It's also nice to find easier ways to put color. Mm -hmm. Um, other than just, you know, standard stripes. Uh, so, yeah, excited for this to come out next month while it's still hot enough to wear. What yarn do we have for that? Um, we were back to the mandarin repeat, the cotton. the cotton, and then yeah. you also... This looks like a good weight, too. And yeah. you had also said the, the DK linen the, or the, the sport weight, so, yeah. it's, so it sounds like those might yes. be too. Yes, I think this thinner one especially, I think, would be really lovely. Yeah, the sport weight. <laughs> Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the Silk Plus, actually. Divine Exodus is next. This needs to come off the hanger. This is ridiculous. This pattern is a monstrosity. Really, what inspired this pattern was I was sitting to, I like to like think about knitting as I fall asleep. It's like calming, and I'm like, what's possible? What do I want to do next? And I was just thinking about how one would construct a fleet. I guess I was aware that it's been done, it's been possible. I've never made a pattern that has it, so I just had to kind of figure that out in my own brain, conceptually, like, how, how do you do a pleat? And I was like, it's really just as simple as using the technique of a three needle bind off with like four or five needles or whatever it is. <laughs> it's an extra layer of fabric, but you're just, it's kind of whoa when you actually do it, and there's a video tutorial for it in the pattern, but you're just, uh, you have a, t I'm not even showing you guys the pleat, because I like looking at it. <laughs> it's got this gigantic box pleat on the top, and of course, I cords on the neckline, and an I cord to just That's give a right. top structure, like something visually, for this pleat to emerge out of. But it's worked bottom up, uh, tons of stitches, because the pleat is so large. And I, I really like the garter stitch on the, the sleeve and the hem for this, but I didn't want to make you knit like 350, 400 stitches of garter <laughs> stitch in the round. So actually the hem is knit flat. And then you just join in the round once you go into stockinette and leave it split. And then when you're when everything's done, you can go mattress seam really quickly. Those, you know, 12 rows or eight rows, whatever this is at the bottom here. Um, but you knit all of these stitches with no pleat until you get up to the point where you do the pleat. And then it's like you fold your fabric like this with three layers and just it's like a three needle bind off without the bind off right you're just inserting a needle through three loops of yarn pulling it through and going to the next one and that that glues them all together and gives you this really dramatic box pleat and more than anything else I, I would say this is like an interesting jacket like layering piece right um, I had a few test knitters knit this into a full dress, which you really get to see the pleat fully spread out all the way at the bottom in the dress form. I can never knit that much, but I'm glad there are people who like to do really cool, dramatic versions like that. Um, and we have the wool stock again. The wool stock. Uh, yeah. Where we are seeing a lot of this because I really love, like, I'm a spinner too. I love toothy, farmy looking wools. And it's not just that I like working with them, or it's not just a personal preference. There's a design reason behind that with all these patterns. For example, Earth and Air, the wool and spun yarns, even though they're like tough, a little bit rougher and have things 
you know, wool sticking out in all directions, they're actually lighter. You usually get a little bit more yardage for the same amount of weight than you would on a worsted spun, which is quite smooth, or like a superwash yarn. Um, so that helps, especially when I'm doing something like earth and air that's knit on these really large needles. It helps not weigh down this delicate fabric you've made it. It wants, it wants to stay floating up. Um, and that's kind of the same thing in the next design I'm going to talk about on the list. I'm stepping on these cool off every time I <laughs> stand up. I like my big pants, okay? Um, slug core. This was the pattern that came out on my birthday this year. We did a, the big birthday sale. Um, it's knit in this mohair from Pearl Soho that's a little bit thicker than a standard mohair. So I would say if we're using um, the mohair I showed earlier, the Emma's yarn mohair, this is the more standard kind. Are these all the same? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, if we're using are. a more like standard mohair, the type you would use when you're holding it double with another yarn or something, I would probably go triple stranded to knit this. I think you can definitely go double stranded, but you're not going to get the same amount of coverage that you get on this, um, if that makes sense. Uh, also, people have done it holding it with non-fuzzy light yarns, like regular wools, and some of those versions are quite cool. But I will say it's another case of like, this is a really oversized sweater and using this featherweight kind of mohair helps it not shrink or <laughs> sh shrink horizontally and stretch vertically, right? Um, I wanted something that would kind of stay draped over me a little bit larger. Um, but definitely some of the versions people have done in regular wools look lovely. It's just a little bit of a different look than this. And again, with all of my long sleeve things I've done, probably half the test knitters and half the people who have knit it sent have done a short sleeve. It's just a different look. It's cool. And uh, I like when either customers or buying my patterns or testers who are graciously volunteering to help me, um, they often ask, like, is it OK if I change? I'm like, you're the one who has to wear this sweater. And you're doing me a favor. So do whatever you want. Just let me know. <laughs> Make a note about it. Um, also, this is so fast. I'm kind of a slow knitter because I don't like to knit too many hours a day, and I feel like I knit this in about a week. Um, and that's always really fun. Mm -hmm. And that's all the projects on the list. But before we go to any questions, I want to show some sneak previews of stuff I'm working on. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably, if you watch my stories, you've seen one of these, which is the new modular design I'm working on. I think this is going to be called Beads of Joy. I'm not sure about that yet. But um, it uses the same technique as Mystic Square and Sungazer of you have building blocks, you pick up stitches, and you're doing purl two togethers on the wrong side to glue each new adjoining piece together. And um, these little squiggly strands of beads are going to go up vertically. And you can see I've just started. Here's the top. The neck shaping has just begun here. So yeah, expect this out in maybe September or October, I would say. It's probably a good time for this. By the time our Noro comes. Yeah. I'm sure <laughs> it is. Hopefully it will have already come and sold yes. out. So I don't feel bad about bullying you and then acquiring Noro for the shop. Um, but yeah, I just love these color changing yarns. And again, it doesn't have to be Noro. There's so many fun color changing yarns like the Peter Brooks, Spin Cycle. Nitpicks Knit Chroma is an affordable color changing yarn. Um, there's all sorts of things for you to choose from. As long as you get gauge and like your fabric, go for it. Um, and also with all of my Noro designs so far, I think I'll do the same on this. I like to just make a simple neckline. It doesn't dip too much and do the same thing on both sides. So if you get a really weird color change on one side, you have the choice of what goes in the front or you can just change it around. So they're reversible in that way. And then Another design, which this is truly, like only my close friends have seen this one, is gonna be my first sock pattern. And there, it's a, something I've wanted to do for years and I just only recently have finally started doing it. But it's a sock pattern in two versions with a two-tiered oh, wow. ruffle. Oh my God. That is just so ridiculous. <laughs> Especially the mohair one is so, I like, I finished knitting the ruffles. Oh you, you knit a sock and it's gonna be a complete sock pattern, but the thing with this pattern is gonna be like, if you know how you like to knit your socks, you know your stitch count, as long as it's a multiple of eight, and you know the heel you like to use, you can ignore my pattern and just use the instructions. I'll have a video on the technique for how to pick up the stitches and knit these ruffles. 
um, you can go off book on this pattern and probably end up fine if you just want to figure out this part. Um, but I finished knitting this and just started laughing. I was like, this is why, this is cursed. Why would anyone make something <laughs> like that? It's like I'm gonna float away when I'm walking with my, my socks and sandals, my Birkenstocks, with little fluffy clouds. They're like big. And then I have this other version. It'll be one pattern that has instructions for both. That is a lace yeah. version. It has less stitches. It's not flouncing off and ruffling a lot because I want you to be able to see the lace. and. This is a prototype. This is not actually going to be photographed or shown. I'm redoing my lace sample and just tweaking from what I didn't like about this. I want to see if I can get a more scalloped edge. Mm -hmm. This is also just some staff yarn. I, I wanted to do it in white, but then by the time I finished knitting this, I was like, this is a little bit grayer, bluer, to more tonal than I wanted. So I'm actually doing my, this is ritual dyes, and I like because she has the same colorways in her sock yarn and her mohair, and I like them to be matching. And um, I'm doing my next sample in this in Pat to Chloe, because I mean, it's not the softest thing, but it's at Joann's, and it's like probably five bucks or seven bucks or something, so we like that. We like financial accessibility and yarn. Um, so yeah, those are my two designs to expect in the next few months, and I'm really excited about that. Thanks for listening to me talk for a long time about me <laughs> and all my work, but it's Oh, we have questions, too. I am yeah. happy uh, to open up the floor for Q&A. Yeah, so I've got some that have been submitted, so I'm going to ask one while you guys formulate yours, and then I'll ask you for you. Um, so here's one. Uh, James, talk about what your design process looks like. It, it differs um, by the pattern. Some of them I'm really unsure if it's of the technique behind it and if it's going to work out, and I need to do a lot of swatching and experimenting and knitting. Um, like sometimes I'll just map out the numbers for a sample to perfectly fit me as I want and see how it goes and see if anything needs tweaking. And then other designs I know without question, just from conceptualizing them, I'm like, I know exactly how to do this. Like my modular designs, they're rectangles. The actual shape is simple and I don't have to doubt that an eight inch positive chest, positive ease mm -hmm. chest and a drop sleeve is gonna look lovely on everyone. Um, it's just a matter of figuring out what goes inside and that math. But once I figure that out, with those designs, I often grade and do all the math and write the pattern before I do any garment knitting. I'll just start with the swatch and then go ahead and do all the computer work and then I knit and other times that's for first. Anybody here have a question? All right, well, I'll let you think about it because I'll ask you again. Uh, what's your favorite pattern? You're allowed to have a favorite pattern. I would say my favorite garment is probably Pure Mesh. I'm just really proud of that one. It makes me happy because it's so different from what's on the market. And it's, it was scary for me to do a pattern that is skin tight with a lot of negative ease. The fabric is weird too. Like the swatching is weird. It's hard to tell if you're getting it right because it's such a, it's a fabric where you can stretch your swatch like this and like this, right? Um, so getting that right, but then to see it come into the world and see people knitting it and it's just sexy and skin tight and perfect on everyone who's knitting it makes me really happy and I'm proud of it. And then beyond that for accessories, like I said, I wear this color cosmic cap all the time. So that one. So that goes along with this one here. When you began designing, did you intend on creating, um, you know, unisex, gender doesn't matter patterns and well, size inclusive patterns? Yeah, obviously, I, I think that's becoming more the in industry standard, as it should be, and for the sizing. And of course, that's going to be important to me. I'm sized out of all sorts of stores and stuff as a 2XL, generally, in America. Um, and designers who still aren't on that boat yet, get on it. It's really not... It's so confusing to me when people talk about, like, well, I, don't, I can't, or I don't know how. There's so many standards and resources for us to use as designers that mm -hmm. tell you... I mean, and that's the thing. We can't do bespoke knitting patterns for everyone's body, but that's why these industry standards exist to get something that's somewhat average. Um, and that's also the other thing about nice thing about knitwear is that it's stretchy and flattering, and you know, um, sewing needs to be more perfect, right? So that was a given. It was a no-brainer okay. to have size-inclusive patterns. And then I I don't even think with most of my patterns about gender because I I am such a queer and gender fluid person myself who 
has explored a lot in the past several years with wearing feminine clothing and masculine clothing and back and forth of what I feel like. And uh, yeah, with the exception of one of these designs, I have modeled all of my own patterns and knit them in a 2XL. And with many of them, I, you know, in the knitting community in general, it's a little bit more skewed towards um, femme or women knitters. So here's me, you know, someone born male and queer modeling all these designs. And uh, then the actual people knitting them are women. And I, I don't know, it's just, I don't even think about it. I'm like, oh, this is a femme pattern, this is a masculine pattern. I, know, I just, I consider all my patterns unisex, even I think people would argue with that. There's a male knitter who's pestered me on Ravelry being like, you put this as a male pattern and I'm looking for something that fits men. And I'm like, well, I have a, a man's body. <laughs> I'm wearing it. What are you trying to say? Like, I, you know, I'm not a football player with super broad shoulders, and like, I don't think I understand that some people have those body types, and there is definitely a market for like men's sweaters and knitting patterns that specifically maybe have a, a more masculine man's body mm -hmm. in mind than my own, but. Come on, it's knitting, it's stretchy. I'm sure you can fit your shoulders in my sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes your pattern so accessible and exciting. Yeah. I would like to think so. Yeah. He really wants me to remove the uh, mail tag from Ravelry <laughs> Elk. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> All right, any, any from you? I got some more, but I don't wanna. Yeah. yeah. Who was your inspiration to start? Who would you say? Uh, what? I would say I inherently had an extreme curiosity and love for making as a child. So there wasn't a person to get me started other than I just, I knew I was like, as soon as I knew it was possible to take yarn and create fabric and to sew and all that, I was hungry to learn. And then to actually get into designing, it started with Best Beret just because I was like, well, I can't find what I want, mm -hmm. so I have to make it. And then transitioning into taking maybe a hobby and a side hustle to a main career and focus, I have to credit my friends a lot. I mean, some of my closest friends are other designers in the industry. And, oh my gosh, they held my hand a lot when I first was like, okay, I'm ready to do a garment. And they saw me, like we would co-work on Zoom and stuff, and they saw me like writing down math by hand. And they were like, what are you doing? <laughs> you need to open Excel. And like, and I was like, but I haven't used Excel since I was forced to learn it in high school. I don't know how to do a formula. And they're like, just, like it's not that hard. And they're right. And like, Thank goodness. And that's what I was going to say about grading for, you know, uh, larger bodies. It's not different. Like, I know I want certain points to have certain amounts of ease, and it's a lot of drag and drop formulas on Excel, you know? So, there's no excuse. Did you seek out friends in the knitting community, or like, did those designers it come was, to you and It was organic. You were... We all just found each other on Instagram. Um, I, I found them and followed them mutuals long before I had a large following and long yeah. before I had put out a design um, and I'm glad that it was it was a very organic online friendship that has flourished and become a really lovely in-person friendship where we prioritize seeing one another yeah, and, seems so you know genuine. we are invested in each other's lives beyond knitting yeah. I've got a really great one here to end with but I want to see if anybody else has a question before I ask the last one don't be shy. Okay. Yeah. And uh, once we end here, we'll have other time for other interaction. But here's the, here's a great question that was submitted ahead of time. What would you like to see more of in the fiber community? That's a great question. I, I would say I just get excited by anything that I feel like I haven't seen before. So no shade. Like, I... I want to put out a boring raglan pattern that has nothing special about it at some point because I want to do my own my own way and have a little twist on it and I don't think there is like a surplus or a scarcity mindset with any which way. Uh, I love another beautiful top down raglan and I'll, I want to knit all of them but I also at the end of the day I get really excited when I'm like whoa I never thought of that I've never seen that that's a cool way to use color. Mm -hmm. I mean, when fading first became a thing, it blew up, but now we don't think anything about it. But it was innovative at the time to have the freedom of just grab all these yarns and we're going to make them work together. So more of that. All right, that's a perfect way to, we're going to close out our Facebook audience. Thanks for tuning in there.